Next, we're going to focus on hitting the asteroid. So when a projectile actually hits one, we should either remove it from the screen or shrink it. I don't really know what we're going to do yet, but let's start with removing one. I think that makes the most sense. So over here with our game, what is the functionality behind hitting an asteroid with a projectile and then removing it on hit? You see they just go over the asteroids right now. We want to remove an asteroid. Well, to do this, we're going to need to understand a little bit of circle-to-circle -circle collision detection. Let's go over it briefly right now. So here's the deal. We're going to have two circles. This is going to be an asteroid, and then the little blue dot is going to be our projectile. How do we determine whether or not these two have hit? It might be easier to make the projectile a little circle as well. Well, we need to get the position between the centers of these two. And that means we need to get the distance from here to here. That is the distance. It's going to be some value like 20 pixels, 30, 40, 50, and onwards. We're always going to be monitoring this. But eventually, this distance is going to shrink over time to the point where these two are touching. So these two are going to touch right here. We're still going to have a distance associated between the two points. And it's going to be something even smaller than 20. Let's just say, hypothetically, this is equal to 10. But how do we say when these two touch at this point and the distance is 10, we want to remove our asteroid from the scene altogether? Well, we need to take into account the radii of both of these circles. So this asteroid right here has a radius from here to here, more so here to there. And then our projectile has a radius from here to there. So if we basically take both of these radii into account and say if our projectile distance is less than or equal to these two radii put together, then we know that is a condition in which we want to splice both these out from the screen and continue onwards with our game. That's basically the gist of it, but how do we actually get that distance in which we need to track between the projectile and also the asteroid? Well, we can do so using the Pythagorean theorem. So bringing back our asteroid and bringing back our projectile. The, Pythag the, the Pythagorean theorem is going to work like this. We're going to get the distance between our centers on the x-axis first. So that distance is actually going to be from right here to right there. That's almost perfectly horizontal. And whatever that distance might be is going to be the first step. And we can get this by subtracting the x-coordinate associated with our asteroid by the x-coordinate associated with our projectile. That'll give us this distance. Let's say it's equal to 10. Then we need to get the distance on the y-axis. So what is the difference between this y and this y? It's going to be quite small. So whatever that might be. Let's say it's equal to 2. We want to get the distance between these two. So y is equal to 2, and then 10 is equal to x. So we got the distances, right? Well, if we square these distances, so 10 squared and 2 squared, we're going to have 100 for x, and then we're going to have 4 for y. If we add these together and then get the square root of both of these, we are going to get this exact distance, how long this green line is altogether, and we can begin using that to detect for a collision. That is the most basic Pythagorean theorem lesson I can give you with my crappy math instruction. So let's continue onwards with that. We want to get the distance on the x and the y coordinates between those two objects, which means we need both objects available to us to start detecting for collision. I think in this case, it makes sense to create a separate function for this in which we can reuse later on between circles. I'm going to call this circle collision. And it's going to take two arguments. It's going to be circle one and then circle two. It's never going to expand past that and these are interchangeable anyways. So we don't really need to do any object syntax with our arguments. But we want the difference or the distance between circle 2's x-coordinate and circle 1's x-coordinate to start. So x difference is going to be equal to circle 2 dot position dot x minus circle 1 dot position dot x. That'll give us this tealish line on the horizontal x-axis. 
That is that distance right there. Now we need to get the y distance, which is the tealish line on the y axis. So we can get the y difference. You can also call this distance, doesn't really matter, but we want circle twos. Position dot y minus circle ones. Position dot y. That's going to give us the distance right here. It should be equal to something like two, hypothetically. What do we need to do next? We need to square both of these. And then we need to get the square root of both. So we can say that the overall distance is equal to math.sqrt, square root. Always looks like squirt to me. So math.squirt is going to be equal to x difference times x difference. That is going to be x difference squared. And then we want to add on to this the y difference times the y difference. You can also use math.pow. That is totally viable. I just think this way is easier for what we're doing. But this should give us the distance between two circles' centers. However, we want to tell if the outer rim of the circles are touching. Therefore, we're going to add in an if statement that says if the radii of these two circles. So let's think, what is the radius of our first circle? It's going to be circle one dot radius plus circle two dot radius. If the distance that we are calculating between the two from the center is less than or equal to the radii put together. That means these two are absolutely touching right here. Let me move it on over. If these two are touching right here, then we're going to call whatever is within this if statement we just wrote. So let's do that now. If these two are definitely touching the outer rims, then we want to return true. Else, we can move onwards and just simply return false. So given that I actually wrote this correctly, when two circles touch or collide, we should return true or false. Let's console log out some text inside of our true if statement that says two have collided. And then we can start using this function right here. So how do we use that function? We know we need two circles for it to work, which means we need an asteroid and then we need a projectile. So Right now, we do have a projectile and we do have an asteroid, but they're only available inside of their own separate for loops. They need to be available within the same one. Therefore, I'm going to add in the same for loop right here for looping our projectiles. I'm going to add that in to our asteroids for loop. So I'm adding that in. This is for projectiles. And this is going to allow me to grab one particular projectile. I do not want to call update on this, but rather I just want to listen for whether or not this projectile has collided with any of the asteroids we're looping over. So we're saying for every asteroid we have in our asteroid array, check for every projectile within our projectiles array and see if the two are colliding. So I want an if statement that uses circle collision. And the first circle we are using here is going to be asteroid, and the second will be projectile. So if these two have collided right here, what do we want to do? We want to console log out, big success. So we're going to have big success there. And then we know our function is definitely working with circle collision. If we console log out, the two have collided. Let's save it and see how it works. I'm going to inspect element, refresh. And now when I shoot a projectile and it touches an asteroid within console, we should see some text. I don't trust myself with the small ones. I'm going to choose a big one. And you see that we are logging out that text whenever the two have collided. Let me try that again. So you see we're just logging out these arrays. And if I shoot this big one, we are constantly logging out that text, but only for the time period in which those two are touching. So once again, this is a perfect tutorial for me because I seem to be getting everything right on the first try. I'm going to call that a success for hitting asteroids, but we need to react to this hit in some way. And the most basic way to react to this is to just remove both the projectile and the asteroid from the screen altogether. So let's do that now. We know circle collision is working. We can get rid of this console log and go down to where we're actually monitoring for these collisions. It's going to be right here within our asteroid management and projectiles loops. So if there is a collision, we want to splice out both the asteroid and we want to splice out the projectile. So I'm going to grab wherever we're splicing out our asteroids, which is down here when they go off the screen, and paste that directly within our circle collision. 
I want to do the same thing for our projectiles, so I'm just making this fast by grabbing the code we already wrote and pasting it within our circle collision if statement. So now when these two collide, we're removing them from the screen based off their index. But look at this, we are using the same index for both of these. And we need a different index for both because we might be removing an asteroid, an asteroid based off of the index from our projectiles. We absolutely need to make sure that these index values are different from each other. Therefore, with, whenever we're looping over our projectiles, I'm going to use let j instead of i. So you want to find every location which you have i and replace it with j to make sure that you're referencing the correct index for your projectile's array. And if we splice these two out, we no longer want to run any code that comes after it because it's just kind of useless. We don't need to run the same asteroid detection code for garbage collection if the asteroid doesn't exist anymore. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move this inner for loop with projectiles to the very end of our main for loop with asteroids. That way we check if they are off the screen. If they are, we're just removing the asteroids altogether. There's no reason to check for anything else. We're going to check if they are on the screen. And if a projectile has collided with one, then we're going to remove both. So we save and refresh. And now when I start hitting these asteroids, they should be removed. So let me try to hit one. My aim is obviously terrible. Hit that one and it is removed. This big one should be removed. Yep. And yeah, that's all we need to get going. So a few ways you could alter this on your own are if you have a really big asteroid like these guys over here, you could shrink their radius on hit and say, I only want to remove this from the screen if the asteroid's radius is less than something like 10. That's a really fun way to alter your game a bit. And since the asteroids are already dependent on their radius property value, like how big they are, as you begin to decrease their radii, they're automatically going to get smaller as you render them out on screen. I would definitely challenge you to do that on your own, but I think this is a perfect ending for showing you how to code hit asteroids.